Hey everybody, this is John Box. And today on Metatrends, you know, I'm back from behind the commentary desk because I was part of the commentary team. You know, I got, you know, front row seats on everything and we got to break down all of the meta relevant stuff. I took notes basically post uh, top 32 and onwards, got to kind of analyze a lot of this stuff down. So we've got some new engines. We can break down a lot of discussions on Diabell Star, Super Poly, why is Typhon so expensive? What are the most successful techs? All that and more in this video. And yeah, we broke it down together. Well, I guess now I'm here alone delivering with you guys, but I got a bunch of shout outs to give as well. So make sure you guys stick around, hit that like button, hit subscribe, ding that notification bell. And you know what? Let's jump in. So the first thing I want to talk about will be the new engine that we're all able to play using Dark Monsters, and that's going to be the Vision Resonator with Crimson Gaia. The package is very simple. You only use Vision Resonator, that's a three of, and then you use one to two of the Crimson Gaia to just constantly cycle the Vision Resonator because you can add something that mentions Red Dragon Archfiend, and luckily this is one card that does mention it. And so you use Crimson Gaia to add Vision Resonator, you can add it from the graveyard or the deck to the hand, so it never really runs out of gas, and as long as you're able to put out monsters that are dark you get a free level 2 tuner so essentially acting as once per turn you get a free e telly yeah and yeah this particular monster does not restrict you into any sort of specific summoning so you can definitely take advantage of this and the person that really highlighted this was during the last round of swiss kaylin played this with the horus engine horus engine and bestial engine are two that can really function with this because Bestials, you automatically get yourself the dark through the bestial monster, so that's already really working out. But Mseti plus Vision Resonator is a two card combo that sets you up for a rank 10, sorry, a level 10 synchro or a rank 8 Xyz. Quite simply, if you want me to kind of break down the line here, uh, you use Mseti discarding the Vision Resonator, setting up your King Sarcophagus, and drawing one card. Vision Resonator will activate and getting you the Crimson Gaia. You can activate the Crimson Gaia and get yourself another copy of Vision Resonator. Ultimately, you just drew a card for free, and Mseti and the Graver can summon itself back onto the field. Being a dark level 8 monster, that automatically satisfies the condition for Vision Resonator to summon itself out. Or you can get rid of that copy of Vision Resonator for another level 8 in the graveyard, and that provides you with a quick rank 8. Yeah, that's how easy this engine is, and it's naturally a plus one, but then you have long-term recursion. That's why this engine is really powerful. If you're planning on playing any sort of dark deck, I highly recommend trying it out, and maybe you'll get yourself a little bit of extra synchroing option. And on top of that, if you play with Bestials, consider running it with the Scar Red Dragon package with the Red Dragon Archfiend so that whenever you perform a Synchro Summon say, into your Bestial Dissipator, you will be able to nuke your opponent's board along the way. But this is a very cheap engine that you just need to pick up some of the structure deck for, but I think this thing has a lot of potential moving on into the future, and I don't think it's even fully explored yet. So let's answer the age-old question. Do you play three Diabell Stars, or do you play one? That's a really good question, because a lot of people opted to play three, because the Rescue Ace deck wants to see the engine. They want to see it so that they can get their Hydrant out, they can get everything started up, and perhaps they can even set up a Synchro along the way. So if you're playing three, you get to perhaps go into your Jet Synchron, you get to make Borlode Savage, Baron, Baron de Fleur. These are all very easy options to protect you against mass board wipes and get you an advantage when it comes to interaction against your opponent. If you're playing one, that's fine too. If you're a player as good as Steven Santoli who just took the entire tournament, he only played one in his list, but would he change it up in the future? I don't know. You know, people will be diverse, people adapt and they get better. Uh, but for him, one was enough. And his deck, his extra deck rather, focused more on uh, the Cybers package from the uh, Link Decoder to the Protocode Talker to Firewall Dragon into all the way to you know Firewall Dragon, uh, Dark Fluid Terahertz. All of that is in his package, so he can still dodge stuff like evenly match through the use of his own cards as well. But one card that never misses the mark is going to be SP. There was a point where he could go into Terahertz, he didn't go into Terahertz. It was SP all the way because board breaking is insane this format. And you definitely need cards from Age of Overlord, otherwise you're not going to be able to keep up because board break all the board breakers are 90% of them right now that are used the most are from Age of Overlord. So one, if you want to play with one Diabell Star, that's fine too. One, two, three. That matters, well, in terms of consistency, but if you just play with one, your extra deck is a bit more tight and more packed with Cyber monsters. If you're playing three, you load it more on towards the Synchro package, but you do have a little bit more of the extra deck space, so maybe you can play stuff like Super Poly. 
Like Super Poly is an incredible tech, but we've got more techs coming up at the end of which were the most successful techs. Now, before I jump into this part, I want to give shout outs to people that kind of help compile this part. And the names are number one, people behind the desk. We have Asala, Joe, and Billy Break. You know, it's really fun kind of talking to you guys, kind of breaking it down, analyzing all these deck lists, good times. Asala's super analytical, Joe's super prepared, Billy super funny, and really just adapts on the fly. Awesome stuff. And your Manadium knowledge is just mind blowing. And then there are people that help me analyze this kind of on the floor or you know at dinner. We have Jesse Cotton, we have Juho on, Jack, and Tristan Bridges. You guys are awesome at kind of breaking down the fusion material and kind of talking about the Dia Beltar stuff. You know, what's the correct ratio, what's the best way to play rescue ace, you know, all that stuff during dinner. Appreciated all that. Anyways, with that being said, let's jump into it. Main or side? Do we play this in the main? If you want to play Super Spoly in the main deck, then you have to have ways that you can use it defensively so, so you can dodge effects. Otherwise, it's just not really worth it for you. You're, you're going to look at it and it will feel like a change of heart. There's, like, there's no value in that card going first. So having a Super Spoly helping you dodge card effects like Imperm and just removing stuff on the field that you don't need is kind of crucial if you want to main deck this, which also means that you have to have a deck that kind of matches with the stuff that you're going to be using in into. So there's really four main targets right now. Uh, number one, it's going to be Garura. Same type, same attribute, different names. It's just really useful because there's tons of machines. Whatever, you guys can get it. Second one is going to be the Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Uh, Mud Dragon, probably one of the best options here. And and Tristan Bridges told me, hey, some people consider playing instant fusion for this card so you can start off with a card, call fire, and then you just play through your combo, not worrying about imperm, especially if you're going first. It is a bit of a sackier play to open a card like instant fusion. And then you can also use the instant fusion like the Mud Dragon of the Swamp, and you can just use it to go into SP. And that's going to trigger because it was a technically a monster from the extra deck. So that's really cool too. The next monster here actually works for both Manadium and Rescue Ace. And that's going to be Draco Equest. Although it is a little bit more situational. It requires your opponent to really hard commit and have those boards. Which would be Draco Equest. You need to be able to eat a Baron de Fleur. Plus a Dragon Synchro. Now why does that work for say Rescue Ace? It's because Barload Savage is also a Dragon. So you can take out those two and still make this card still pretty useful. Uh, in my opinion against Manadium. This was a classic because they have Dispater and Baron. You can use that to kind of take out that particular problem. But there is also one more monster that's been added to the mix. And that's Guilty Gear Freed. Guilty Gear Freed can eat up the SP Baron boards. That's right, the SP Baron boards, they're still very difficult to manage, uh, but SP can be kind of super polyed off with the Baron because they're two warrior monsters with different attributes. And these are some of the options you have. But should you play this in your side deck? Maybe, you can definitely try to put it in your side deck. I think it might still be worth it uh, if you have the extra deck space because no interaction is the best type of interaction. You'll always win those chains and you can kind of reset the game state, reset the chains and try to you know play at your tempo. That's the whole point of this is you need to be able to play at your tempo and maintain the advantageous position. But that's why Super Poly is so popular right now, which is why it's such a good option, whether it be main or side. Now, this next, next one here is a little bit more niche, but we did see it in play and did take the feature match. It was, I believe it was round 10 of the feature match, uh, which was Makonko with Ken and Gen with the Acid Golem swap. That's right, because the Makonko deck is mainly made up of level 3 monsters, it synergizes pretty well with the Ken and Gen. And most people thought that it was going to be more towards like Dark World or Pearly. Yeah, it's true, but the Ken and Gen combo, loading your opponent with a monster, basically enables Geonator Transverser to do a monster swap. Now, why does it work particularly well with Makonko? Quite simply, it's because Makonko has multiple ways of putting monsters on the opponent's side of the field. Like, they have Fire Dance as well. On top of that, uh, they can also use Assault to play with Equips because Makonko is also Equip-based. And so this... Honestly, this deck is a bit of a masterpiece, so I highly recommend you guys checking it out or even checking out that replay of how it actually played out. It's really, really cool. But ultimately, at the end of the combo, there's going to be a Geonator Transverser somewhere in the extra monster zone, and then there's going to be a monster pointed to it on the opponent's side that's typically one of your own monster, and then there's an Acid Golem made at the very end to swap over. And once you have an Acid Golem, if you guys don't know what it does, the controller cannot special summon. And during the standby phase, you either detach a material or you take 2,000 damage. If you have no more material, you can't even attack with the card. And since you're giving your opponent a 3k beat stick, it's incredible because now you can crash your monsters into that and you're playing my Congo deck, the damage is reflected to your opponent. So they take all the damage and it leads to a quick OTK. So yeah, honestly, it's a really interesting combo. Uh, likely 
if you see anyone at your locals, they're probably going to incorporate that into their strategy. Considering that it also enables all of the triple attack <laughs> cards as well. Now during the event, if you met up with me while I was on break and you showed me that you were subscribed, I was going to give you a quick gift and those gifts included sleeves and if you did the secret quest, you would have gotten the foil sleeve. And speaking of which, check it out at mstmerch.com mstmerch.com you guys can get some of the essential sleeves that are good for tournament play we have the black we have the white we also have the now very very popular pink you guys really love the pink for some reason the white has always been our top seller and the black one it is you know a metallic black it's really really cool gunmetal black and then we have our foil series this is the lt instinct and this is the ego and we even have over sleeves to protect them that is oops just dropped it the over sleeve you know they come out you know, they come in matte, they come in smooth, whichever texture that you would prefer. You guys can check it out mstmerch.com and that's mstmerch.com. Next, there is why is Typhon getting so expensive? It's very simple. The true purpose of the card has basically revealed itself on stream. It is not a Zeus killer. No, that's not his purpose. This is a board breaker it literally is the finishing board breaker if you engage into battle fuzz you cleared most of your opponent's board they summon multiple times from their extra deck so you go into basically sp blah 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 you leave a monster with over 1600 attack points on your side of the field and you overlay this card on top and take out the last monster especially when you need to take out a monster that you don't want your opponent to land in the graveyard or banish then this is the ideal monster because you can shove it away this card can take out the problematic mirror jade as well and so based off of how people use it to clear boards after they've gone to the battle phase the main phase clear off some stuff battle phase attack through the monsters sp remove the last monster and then finally we get into typhon typhon bounces away say a garura a mirror jade it's really really epic of what this card actually does and while it's on the field it makes it so that your opponent more or less has to answer it because if there's a turbulence on the field they can't activate it and so they have to kill this first there's a lot of limitation and it really manipulates the phases sure you can't summon anything any further which is why this is the finishing play of the turn not the opening and it doesn't really work against zeus if there's like a seven material zeus or eight material zeus you can bet that that zeus is going to basically detach every single time you put a card onto the field I'm just saying Okay, so this last part here is going to be about the techs that people played that were most successful and the ones that we've seen most played in top 32 would be Forbidden Droplets, Enemy Controller, Book of Eclipse, and Super Poly. I think these are probably the best options here if you want to break a board, clear board, or protect your own stuff. Uh, first off, Forbidden Droplet, Arise Heart is gone. And Droplet is very good at triggering stuff that you activate in the graveyard, such as sending Prevented away. You can get rid of your opponent's problematic cards, like uh, they gave you an Ibli, for instance, or they gave you an Acid Golem. You can send them all away for cost and start negating some stuff. Luckily, this card perhaps does not target, so it's good. It's good for all of us. Uh, second one would be Enemy Controller, played by Triff, and I believe also Steven Santoli. Steven Santoli used it to break the board against Logan Johnson in game one. If you want to witness it, you can guys check it out. That was like a big interaction and force the baron activation really good stuff uh this card i think is really good at making trades especially in a format where there's so much targeting involved you can definitely you know turn the whole targeting thing around as long as you use the enemy controller and get rid of the thing that they target now you can definitely benefit off of that and taking a monster instead and really just burning away your opponent's cards and just regaining advantage also in mirror matches if you're able to take your opponent's like turbulence or take your opponent's hydrant for instance it's not as easy for hydrant of course but if you're able to take some of these major major cards you can set yourself up for a perfect counter without committing your own resources okay so it's pretty big another one that's pretty huge would be book of eclipse book of eclipse defensively is already pretty decent i mean you can use it to dodge like imperm but if your opponent leaves out an ip mascarena and likely they're going to go into an sp to counter you then the book of eclipse can turn all of those monsters off and therefore the ip mascarena is stuck on the field with nothing and it already activated her effect so she kind of becomes a little bit you know a little not as threatening and if there's anything that's kind of once per chain that you uh think that your opponent's trying to kind of force on uh you can throw this into the mix and just turn off the rest of the monster so ultimately it does force your opponent to interact but a lot more risky and the fourth card is going to be super poly super poly is just super poly is just you side the card or you don't i think it's just a really good card in general especially when they put it at three and there's this many options in the meta i think it's worth playing 
And that's all I got for this video. But for upcoming stuff, well, I'm going to be updating some of my deck list, but I'm also going to be working on the ultimate counter guide. I had such a great position to see everything and, you know, kind of analyze it and break it all down. I can't wait to bring a guest on and join me on that ultimate counter guide. I'm also going to be updating my rescue ace deck list, and uh, maybe I'll even give you guys finally my branded deck profile, the updated one, because you guys have been asking for it. You guys asked for me on the floor. You guys asked for me in the videos. I'm going to give it to you, okay? I'll give it to you. But, you know, just be patient for a bit. I just need to get some sleep, get some, you know, break things down. And uh, don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and ding that notification bell. And maybe that will speed things up. And until next time, I'll see you on the next one.